Life definitely contains pressures, burdens, losses, and the experiences that we naturally have as a result. Uh, feeling worried, feeling pressured, feeling dismayed, feeling lonely or blue. In a word, suffering. Life contains suffering. It's not the only thing it contains, but it certainly contains some suffering. And for many people, there's a lot of it. What do we do about it? Well, we do what we can out in the world to try to change those things that make people suffer, including ourselves. And we take actions in ways large and small. Um, and meanwhile, we can have compassion for suffering. Compassion is real, even if we can't help. Uh, or for various reasons, we choose not to help. Maybe there are other forms of help that we're more engaged with right now. The compassion can still be real. And compassion is independent of moral view. It's easier kind of for many people to be compassionate for those they like or approve of, okay. But if you think of it, the wish that beings not suffer is separate from whether we you know, value them or approve of them, or alternately, if we're angry at them or outraged by them or think that they've committed injustices and there should be consequences for them. That is separate from the movement of compassion. Now, in addition to being compassionate for others, we can be compassionate for ourselves. And in much the same way, even if we feel like we are the source of some of our own difficulties, we can still have compassion for that. Compassion is independent of judgment. And even if you know we're aware of our foibles, I'm certainly aware of my own, we can still have compassion for the pain, the burden, the weariness, the fatigue, the stress, the loss, the, the long shadow cast by our previous life experiences, particularly in childhood. We can have compassion for that inside ourselves. People who have greater self-compassion are, are more able to push against harsh, brutal sometimes self-criticism. And so people with greater self-compassion, studies show, are more willing to swing for the fences, dare greatly, as Brene Brown puts it, dream big dreams. Compassion for ourselves is where we start, but it's not where we end. We can keep pursuing our goals. We can keep uh, dealing with challenges in a very practical and coping way, you know, after or amidst having compassion for ourselves. So there's some key ways to have compassion for yourself, and you may want to do this while I'm talking about it here. First is to bring to mind the sense of your own difficulties with a feeling of common humanity. Other people, too, are weary. Other people, too, have physical pain. Other people, too, have loss. This is not the sense of common humanity. It's not about diminishing how it is for you. It's about, you know, word from psychology, normalizing it. It's real. It's part of our humanity. So in the first place, we bring empathy for ourselves. We feel it. We accept it. It is what it is. We recognize it. And then in the second step, very important, we mobilize or encourage uh, various aspects of a warm-hearted, supportive, caring, encouraging response. There are different aspects of this. Sometimes the compassion for oneself can feel very sweet. Other times it has a certain muscular uh, toughness in it in a healthy way, you know, like, yeah, that totally sucks. Pause, breath, yeah, it sucks. And whoosh, we got to keep going. Um, but it's not mean, right? It's very important. So we mobilize that supportive response to ourselves. Compassion is bittersweet. There's the combination of the bitter, of the suffering, and the sweet of the supportive response. And it's important that the, the sweet of the supportive response be larger than the suffering so we, don't, so we don't get swallowed up by what we are bringing compassion for. And then in the third step, we try to help the self-compassion sink in. We try to help it land so that uh, gradually over time, we develop trait self-compassion as the result of repeatedly having states of self-compassion, which we then gradually hardwire into our own nervous system so that over time, we more naturally 
uh, come from compassion for ourselves. Uh, it sort of floats in the background of awareness, and we um, draw upon it in, in particularly strong ways when we need to. Uh, last thing I'll say is that working on or developing compassion for ourselves helps us be more compassionate for others. So we do this practice for them as well as for ourselves.